Hey guys, welcome back. Well, it's galaxy season, so it's time to make a few changes. First, we got to switch over from the lower magnification 700 millimeter and 250 millimeter telescopes to the higher magnification SCT, uh, longer focal length system for uh, improved magnification. I also want to take a moment and talk about the selecting uh, targets and both in terms of framing and selecting guide stars. I'll be using the off-axis guider with the high magnification SCT and that brings a few more challenges to the to the game than using say a guide scope. So I want to go over some of those things. Now as we switch from an imaging train system to another uh, in astrophotography tool I want to show what I'm going to do to uh, preserve the imaging setup profile for my ED-102 so that when I go back to it uh, all the settings are still the same as they were when I left. That way when I change the settings to accommodate this new the uh, SCT imaging system I won't be overriding anything. And by the way I'm going to have the video time index over here so you can fast forward to those particular topics that you you may, uh, may be more interested in. After I get done changing out the ED-102 profile for the SCT profile. I want to go back and take a look at my off-axis guider setup based on some images and some studies I did with Stellarium and the images I took for a given uh, arrangement of the off-axis guider and the imaging camera. And then we'll take a look at using Stellarium to select targets and guide stars for those targets. After that, we will set the camera settings and orientation for framing and the guide stars based on the information we have. Uh, up, lessons learned from up here in the pictures I've taken before and with the numbers we pull out of Stellarium. Okay, so let's head over to uh, Astrophotography Tool for a minute. There are a couple of settings here that are uh, kind of unique to the ED-102 and the, and the focuser and temperature sensor that are used in that particular imaging system that I won't be able to, to use in my SCT setup. For example, I have the focal length of the imaging system, 700 millimeters in this case for the ED-102. Also, there are a number of settings over here, for example, in the filter wheel. The filter wheel will be the same for, for both imaging systems. However, these filter offsets will be uh, different for the Celestron Focuser versus the Focus Cube 2 Focuser. And of course there may be some changes that I have to make in terms of uh, which sensor I'm using to provide temperature information. And I will also be changing numbers such as this, the uh, temperature compensation numbers that I use for the focuser on the on the ED-102. So there are a number of settings in here that I don't want to have to change every time. So what I'm going to do is make use of the capability in astrophotography tool to back up the settings. So in this case I'm going to back up the main settings and I'm going to call this apt underscore ed102 and save them to the astrophotography tool directory and now all those settings are backed up I can change these settings in here to accommodate the SCT but when I want to come back to the ed102 settings all I have to do is go into the in the main astrophotography tool directory and just delete this file which will be backed up as a for example C925 uh, configuration file and then I will just copy and paste this uh, as a as the apt.xml file so that when I load apt the next time it will have all the settings for the ED-102. Okay let's head back over and take a look at the setup of the imaging camera and the guide camera. All right so sometime back I put the off-axis guider the Celestron off-axis guider on the SCT. The SCT at that time had the focal reducer and this was a picture I took of M101 on the west side of the meridian. Obviously this is from Stellarium but you can see the the galaxy here. There's NGC 5477 up here and this is the image of the guide stars. Now when I took a look at the actual pictures I took with the, gui with the imaging camera here and the guide camera here you can see as I bounce back and forth that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence looking at these this star this star and this star this is bright in 
the this NGC 5473, it's a galaxy. It's not nearly as bright as shown here in Stellarium. But notice that this star, this star, and this star, and this star over here are very are fairly well represented in this image, the guide camera image. And in fact, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a faint dot here that corresponds actually to this galaxy. So in principle, one could use a distant galaxy as a guide star. Uh, that's a bit, uh, signal to noise ratio is a bit low for that. But anyway, this correspond. this says that we have a, the guide camera is well set up. Now, another thing to notice here, if you do this, I, I recommend that you do this and compare the distance of say a star from the edge here. This is the inner edge and notice that it's about the same in both cases. That means that the parameters set inside Stellarium for the guide camera offset relative to the center of the light cone is accurate. Now another change that I had to make, the ASI 174 Mini has a fairly large aspect ratio so the sensor is fairly long compared to its width and so the sensor actually goes out here however the central tube inside the SCT blocks light from reaching this part of the sensor and so in effect I have while well, I have used the manufacturer's number in Stellarium setup for the width of the sensor I have artificially reduced the length of the sensor back to here so that I don't mislead myself into thinking for example that I can see this guide star when in fact I'm blocked from seeing that guide star. So there's a couple of things we want to confirm by taking a couple of pictures here that we can implement back into settings into Stellarium. And I think you want to do something like this just to confirm that the settings you have correspond to what you're actually seeing because ultimately that's our objective. Ultimately what we want to do is to plan things out in Stellarium then go back in and set our imaging system up so that when we take pictures we get exactly what we expect. Now, that's on the west side of the meridian. I also did this on the east side of the meridian the same night. I just swung over to the bubble nebula, and you can see as we go from the bubble nebula, notice that we have these three stars, these two bright stars here, this stars, this arrangement of stars here. So we're in pretty good shape here. Now, on the guide camera side, these two stars are, are quite visible and this ring of three stars here as well as this pair of stars up here and you can see we're in pretty good shape here now in this particular case I would say that the guide camera has to move uh, to the right a bit now in this case though it's not that the settings are wrong in Solarium it's that my center point here is a bit off and in fact if I could shift the star field relative to the uh, ocular view here, move the star field to the left, it would pull the uh, stars here in line with the stars that I'm seeing here. So once again, I'm getting um, exactly the kind of view out of my guide camera that I'm seeing in the star field produced by Stellarium and its guide camera. Likewise, I'm getting the same view out of the uh, imaging camera that Stellarium is showing me here. So this tells me that I've got things set up and I understand what these numbers are. This was the orientation of the camera. I measured the orientation of the guide camera relative to this axis of the camera. Here's the ASI, here's the logo or the um, name of the camera. That'll be important later as a, as a point of reference as well as this fan opening here. Now relative to the bottom axis of the, the the long axis of the sensor is parallel to this writing here on the back of the camera and that angle is about 105 degrees as I measure it here uh, in this in this picture so given this information we're able I'm able now to define uh, what a a zero orientation angle is so if I orient the writing of the on the bottom of the the, uh, the camera this way here's the fan opening and I put the guide camera on this side of the of the uh, the guide camera on this side of the imaging camera this corresponds to the zero zero orientation meaning that when I get an imaging camera angle orientation I can start from this orientation and dial in exactly the right orientation for the uh, imaging camera. Likewise, when I find in Stellarium a guide camera orientation or an off-axis guider orientation angle, I can type it in relative to this 
uh, position here and get back to the, uh, the reproduce, if you will, and photograph the images that I'm seeing in Stellarium. Now, what that means is when the scope is sitting on a flat surface, there's the mounting rail that goes to the mount. So it's sitting on a level surface. I want my, in effect, my, my imaging camera and guide camera should look like this for the, for the initial orientation. And on the east side of the meridian, when I have a target on the east side of the meridian, I take the imaging camera angle and a, pot, a clockwise orient, a rotation of the camera about its axis will, to this angle, will produce that the correct uh, photograph in the uh, that pairs up with the Stellarium image. And then if I rotate, so I rotate both the camera and the guide camera by this angle, clockwise if positive, counterclockwise if negative. If it's for the off-axis guider rotation, the guide camera angle, it's the angle is continued angle, positive angle, clockwise rotation for the guide camera relative to the imaging camera or to the imaging camera or if it's a negative angle then it's counterclockwise on the west side of the meridian though we've got to take into account meridian flip that is not included in stellarium and so when you get a if the angle you arrive at in your framing study is with the imaging camera is greater than zero subtract that from 180 degrees if the imaging camera angle is less than zero add that negative number to 180 degrees and then the nothing changes with the guide camera counter or clockwise is a positive rotation over here so with the, armed with this information we can then go into stellarium and identify the proper orientation of the imaging camera and the guide camera so that we get the correct framing and the and find the best possible guide stars now since I first took this photo I have since added the Celestron uh, focuser over here which creates a bit of a constriction I can't rotate the guide camera past here there's a set screw that interferes with the mechanism over here uh, there is no in, there doesn't appear to be any in, interference with the filter wheel so I can rotate the camera 180 or 360 degrees but the the guide camera is blocked from uh, getting any further rotation this way and likewise on the other side this set screw here interferes with the focuser and so I can't go any farther than that which means in addition to the other restrictions that we have I can't have a, a final guide camera orientation that falls between this plus or minus 35 degrees because I won't be able to achieve it with that focuser present. Now I haven't done a video yet on the focuser. I've I've obviously installed it. I've gone through the calibration routine where it runs the mirror full in and full out, but I haven't used it yet outside. So that's one of the first tests that I'll be doing once I once I get this system outside. So let's go over armed with this information to Stellarium and pick out a couple of targets for uh, imaging purposes. Now in Stellarium I have the pause set so we're not it's not going to be continually advancing the image we see in real time. This is kind of useful to set pause as you're planning things out. I've got the date set to March 1st kind of the time when I might first be able to get outside. I've got the time set to uh, the first darkness at 7 o'clock it'll be a little too light at 8 o'clock it might be just dark enough to start doing some imaging and now what we need is is a couple of targets now what I'm gonna do is probably image on one side of the meridian I'll if I'm imaging on the east side looking to the east side of the meridian then I'll have the counterweights be a little heavy so that it's heavy to the east side if I'm imaging to the west side I'll have the OTA a bit heavy so that uh, it's always leaning on the gears, the RA gears, uh, to uh, minimize any chance of bouncing between the slot between gears and hopefully get better guiding in that way. But that also means that I don't want to do an, a, a meridian flip. I just want to image targets on one side of the meridian for the entire night. So that means I want to find a target, follow it up to the meridian, and then at that point switch over to another target further down and follow it up to the meridian and then try to use up all of my valuable imaging time through that process. Well, and looking through this, it turns out that uh, one of the galaxies that seems to be most available at 8 o'clock is NGC 
3359. So if I zoom over to that, this is NGC 3359. This line that you see here is my hori local horizon. So in other words, if it's inside this bubble, then I can see the target. There's north, there's a north celestial pole. I'm on the east side of the meridian. If we zoom in to, if we zoom into that target, let me just do this. So if we pick up that target at eight o'clock, then I can have one, two, three, four, possibly five hours of imaging, four to five hours of imaging. But if I choose to switch to another target at about midnight, now I need to find another target that will hopefully take me all the way to 5 a.m. So I'm going to fast forward this to 5 a.m. About the time when light is getting a little too, uh, it might start getting a little too light. And I'm going to zoom in and just try to find a, so here's the splinter galaxy. At 5 a.m., about the time when I want to stop imaging, it's just then reaching the meridian, which is a good time to pick up the, the splinter galaxy. Now, if I go into the ocular, and I have it set to the Celestron C 9.25, I've got the camera rotation angle, that's the imaging camera angle I was talking about, that's set to zero. I can go into the settings and look at the uh, sensor, the guide, the uh, off-axis guider angle is zero. You'll notice I have these numbers set for the sensor. This number here is the inner radius here. So that's the distance from the center of the light cone out to the bottom of the prism. That's the number you want to adjust if your pictures uh, from your guide camera do not correspond to what the image in uh, Stellarium is showing you. So that's the number you want to, to verify. And because mine do match, that means that this number is fairly well, is fairly accurate. The second number I changed is the height of the sensor. And in this case, I redu effectively reduced this to account for the fact that light at the end of that, uh, the outer edge of that sensor is blocked. And then this is the manufacturer's uh, definition of what the width of the, sen of the imaging sensor is. So I used this number and then I adjusted this number to account for the fact that light is blocked. And then we use the photograph versus the Stellarium image to confirm that this is the correct number. I had also used this number was originally set with the uh, measurements I had taken with calipers, so I was pretty sure this was correct anyway. But you'll notice that we're starting off with a zero angle here and a zero angle here. That corresponds to our zero, zero initial state, which is not necessarily the state that we're going to, to have when we finish doing the framing study. Now, in this case, this galaxy is obviously very long. It might be kind of nice to have it be oriented along the diagonal of the, uh, the imaging sensor. Now I'm going to bring this time back to about a time just for comparison purposes. If I have the time set to here, and I think I'll go ahead and kill this off, I want to adjust the camera orientation so that this axis of the galaxy is more aligned with this axis of the sensor. That means I can come along to here and adjust the camera orientation angle and at 25 degrees, the axis of the galaxy is roughly aligned with the uh, diagonal of the imaging sensor, which is pretty good. So that's a good start. Um, now, if I leave the guide camera, where or the uh, OAG, where it is, this orientation, well, it looks like there are a couple of fairly faint guide stars. However, as I've only rotated this 25 degrees, it probably means that I'm still going to have interference with the focuser, uh, that the Celestron focuser that's mounted on the back of the SCT. So I need to move this anyway. Now, a couple of considerations as I, can, as I think about what orientation to pick for that. There are obviously, as I look in here, there are a number of br nice bright stars inside this donut that the off-axis guider can see. One thing I wanna do is avoid if possible, putting the off-axis guider on the side because that prism will start to shadow more and more of the more of the uh, sensor if it's on the side or the corners. So I'm trying to avoid that. So I don't want to try to center these guide stars on there because it'll pillar will tend to block 
this corner of the image. Likewise, I don't want uh, on this corner or this corner, even though there's some very nice guide stars there. Instead, I think I want to shoot for uh, this guide star or this guide star. We can set this to about, uh, I don't know what that number is. Let's try 130 and see what it looks like. So at 130, we're not quite there yet. Let's go back and change that to 150. And perfect, the guide star is right there in the middle of the view. We know we have that allows us a little bit of error. If we don't place things exactly right, the guide star will simply be to the left or right of the sensor. There's a couple of other weaker, uh, fainter stars in here, but we found an orientation of the imaging camera that's compatible with this elongated target. We found an orientation of the off-axis guider that will avoid interference with the focuser, but will also give us the view of a nice bright guide star. What we haven't done yet is to see how these settings also pair up with the other target that we'll be shooting that same night because we're certainly not going to want to go outside and change the orientation of the camera or the off-axis guider during the imaging session. So let's go back to NGC 3359 and see how those settings work out. Well, the the camera orientation is not that bad. There's a smaller target, so it's not the the framing is not that big of an issue for the imaging camera. The guide camera, on the other hand, is catching what appears to be the edge of a nice bright star, and it's got a couple of stars here that are fairly faint. They might be good enough to to be used as guide stars, but I think we can make a further adjustment here and try to bring this star into the field of view. And if we do that, we can just go in and say let's add on another five degrees and that kind of brings it into view another thing that we can do in in making sure we have this guide star available to us is set the aim point for our image slightly off center in other words the galaxy does not this is a relatively small target it doesn't have to be right in the middle of the of the image we can set it off a little bit which buys us a little bit of margin in terms of, of getting the star away from the edge so that uh, we can tolerate a little bit of error in setting up our setting the orientation of our of our off-axis guider plus we'll have these other stars possibly as as fallback points so i think with this orientation a camera orientation of minus 25 degrees a, an, an off-axis guider orientation of positive 155 degrees, this is probably going to work out okay. I think we ought to go back and check this. We've adjusted the off-axis guider orientation, so let's go back to the other target and make sure that that works over there. And sure enough, it's still there where it's not in the center anymore, but once again, we can play the game of selecting a slightly different aim point for our target and pull it back into the center. So, so some combination of checking the uh, setting the RA and deck location of the target center, the image center, and adjusting the off-axis guider orientation, we can bring two fairly good-looking guide stars, fairly bright guide stars for the two targets into view for the same uh, camera settings. Now let's go back and see what the imaging camera and the guide camera will look like when we when we take these settings and put them back onto our camera system. Alright, so we've decided that we can take target number one can be NGC 3359. We'll pick it up at first dark from about 8 p.m. We can follow that target for four hours and then switch over to the second target on the east side of the meridian. Uh, both of these on the east side of the meridian. Uh, NGC 5906 from 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. So that's two targets. We're switching targets at a reasonably manageable time of night uh, if it's not fully automated. Um, so we should be able to, to get good imaging time on both of these targets. Now, we also learned by looking in Stellarium that we need to set the camera rotation angle to minus 25 degrees. So remember, a clockwise rotation is positive and a counterclockwise uh, rotation is negative so we need to rotate as it's shown here this camera is rotated 25 degrees 
uh, in the counterclockwise direction. That means that the off-axis guider was up in this area, and then we rotated it relative to the camera by 155 degrees in the positive or clockwise direction, which brought it back down to here. That means when we have the telescope sitting on a level surface, we need to reproduce this picture here on the back end of our telescope. We can, if we can reproduce this picture with our imaging camera and our guide camera, we will avoid the focuser over here. We will achieve the best possible framing of this elongated target here, and we will ensure that we have uh, two fairly bright guide stars for both of these targets in the field of view while we're imaging this target. Well, all I need is a clear night now. I'll see you guys on the dark side.